community members. Welcome to another installment of Let Me Pick Your Brain, a video series for the Genesis Dublin community where we talk to experts, glean valuable insight into workforce engagement capabilities, and all around explore the wonderful world of WEM. My name is Marcela Reza, and as I'm sure you already know, I am your favorite WEM community moderator. I'm also a product marketing manager here at Genesis and your host for this episode of Let Me Pick Your Brain. This is our fourth episode, so be sure to check out our previous one, featuring Daniel Ho and Natalia Bad tackling the always exciting topic of recording and specifically access control for recording segments. On today's video, we're going to be taking a closer look at one of our WM community members' favorite capabilities, forecasting. Forecasting is, of course, essential to contact center workforce planning, so we thought we'd bring along a Genesis expert in forecasting. Welcome, Danny. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself for the folks at home? Yeah, hi, Marcella. Uh, my name is Danny Shaftelan. I'm the product manager of forecasting in Genesis Cloud uh, WFM. Been a part of the Genesis uh, WM team now for almost a year and have uh, led other forecasting teams in the past. And um, my background is in computer science, which helps me understand some of the fundamentals of forecasting. We also like to ask for a little fun fact. Do you have one to share with everybody? Uh, sure. A fun fact about myself is that I'm um, very athletic. Um, I love uh, a lot of different sports. Um, in the winter time, I usually like to snowboard and in summer months, I like to do some road cycling or mountain biking. Um, I even recently uh, learned how to surf on a recent vacation. And um, while I was surfing, it was really cool because we got to, um, some sea turtles and dolphins came to say hi, right? Like literally feet away from me in the open ocean, which was a really cool experience. And I even, um, when I was young, I, was, I used to play soccer at a very high level to the point where I even uh, played in an international match against Mexico for my age group. So around forecasting, it is a little bit of a complex topic, especially if you're new to it. Um, and we do have, I think, some viewership that maybe are just getting into the topic. Um, so how would you have liked someone to explain forecasting to you when you started out in this space? So forecasting is simply learning from the past to predict the future. So for example, I'm a big uh, hockey fan and um, I can tell you what you can expect from a player based on their past stats. Um, by knowing these past stats, we can look for trends and have an idea of how that perf uh, player will perform in the upcoming uh, season. And that's just another form of forecasting that probably any uh, sports fan does on their own without even thinking about it. Um, in the call center world, it's all about analyzing the historical data to predict the number of interactions and the average handle time. Um, this allows call centers to know how many agents they may need at a specific time um, during the day so they could better serve their customers and meet their uh, goals. And I think that really ties into um, kind of the energy right now with the new year and people trying to set goals and find ways to really meet them. Um, how does forecasting kind of play into maybe taking a long-term goal and uh, trying to find ways to achieve that? So um, forecasting can help you reach a lot of different goals. Um, obviously the primary one would be your service level agreement, but that's more of a long spanning type goal. But maybe um, you have a goal where you wanna reduce the amount of overtime that your, uh, your agents are working. Um, during a certain period and by having a, a good forecast that can really predict what's going to happen um, in that time period, you can staff accordingly and maybe reduce that overtime hours and help your um, agents feel a little less uh, overburdened and avoid some burnout. Um, or it can even go the other way, right, where you know you're going to have such a big demand in a specific time period that you can go and hire ahead of time to make sure that you can meet those demands with the staff available and not burn out your agents as well. So in our Let Me Pick Your videos, we have a lightning round, which is the session where we're going to fire some questions. And um, if you can just give us a nice succinct answer, that would be amazing. So sure. are you ready? Yeah. So first off, can you tell us a little bit more about the automatic best method selection for forecasting? Yeah, sure. So the automatic best method uh, selection in Genesis Cloud Forecasting is um, the natural evolution of forecasting for us. We started with WHI and this was our next uh, 
our next forecasting product, let's say. And, um, you know, with the advancements in technology and whatnot, that's what really allowed us to build out the automatic best method. And um, it's really cool because with the automatic best method, we're automating forecasting with the use of machine learning and artificial intelligence. We evaluate over 25 models using your data, and then we use some machine learning and artificial intelligence to decide which model is the most accurate and generate the best forecast for you based on your data set. And I know that um, back in November, we had a release on a new method for the automatic best method selection. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the ensemble method? Uh, yeah, sure. So the ensemble method is a new method that we recently added to um, to the automatic best method. And it's more um, of an additional layer on top of what we already do with um, ABM forecasting. Instead of taking just one model and generating your forecast on that, we're now taking multiple models and blending them together to create the forecast. So it's really cool because by blending all these different models, if a model would overvalue a certain trend in your data or whatnot, it's starting to, it smooths it out a bit more and it helps uh, create more um, accurate forecasts. And what does this mean for forecasters moving forward? Um, this means that your forecast will be more accurate. Um, you know, combining these multiple models, we avoid situations where one model will overvalue something in the historical data and Ensemble will smooth it out um, and it's quite, good so far from what we've seen in our internal testing. If I want to, you know, use the ensemble method, do I need to have a special setup or do they go live automatically? Um, so ensemble requires nothing special to set up. Um, it went live automatically to all our clients on the Genesis cloud platform with uh, forecasting. Um, and that's also part of the beauty of Genesis cloud. Um, we build these amazing features and they're typically available to our users. Um, with minimal setup on their part and you know it's just there ready to go how would you uh suggest a forecaster really get the most out of you know the new methods and just generally the automatic best method selection so um the biggest thing is your data um your forecast is only as good as the data you provide it um this applies to all methods um no matter how you forecast it's really the essence of forecasting um, if the data is incomplete, it's inconsistent, um, it's got gaps in it, um, there's large spikes or whatnot, um, that can cause issues with your forecast. And while we do have a lot of logic and technology to help alleviate some of these issues in the data, um, it really comes down to just providing the system the best data you can. So we know it's available for Genesis Cloud CX, but specifically who will the new methods and generally the forecasting uh, capabilities be available for? So um, this will be available to anyone who has access to WFM and Genesis Cloud. So I believe that's the Genesis Cloud 3 subscription level, or if you have the uh, WEM, WFM add-on package. Uh, and you know, just out of curiosity, is there anything else we should be excited for in the future? Oh, there's a lot to be excited about. Um, we have a lot of cool enhancements and new features coming to the forecasting uh, side of things in the 2022 year. Um, there's some things I just can't speak to at this moment because they're just uh, really in the design process and we're taking our time to make sure what we're building adds some real value for our users. But um, we are very excited um, about what we're gonna be uh, bringing in. Um, it's almost a whole revamp of the forecasting vision and um, it's gonna be a lot of cool stuff coming. Um, one thing too that I can mention uh, that might get some forecasters uh, excited is um, we understand that our automatic best method and forecasting in general can be considered very much of a black box process where things just go into this box, the data goes in and you get a forecast and you don't know why you got that forecast and how you got there. And that's something we understand that forecasters feel um, as a pain point when it comes to some of these forecasting tools, um, even outside of Genesis. It's just a, a common sense among forecasters, it seems. And that's something we are really looking at seriously um, improving. We want to give forecasters the ability to see into that black box and to understand and speak to the decisions made by the system so they can explain it to their colleagues or superiors or whatnot, why the forecast looks um, in a certain manner, or why is it using a specific model and things like that. If members want to learn more, where can they find more information? Um, 
probably the best place is the resource center. Um, we've got tons of documentation up on there. Um, patch notes will also contain uh, things if we've made updates to forecasting. You'll see some stuff in there as well. Um, these videos are a great way to learn about what we're doing at Genesis, um, not just around forecasting, but other areas as well. And um, yeah, we're always making sure we uh, release as much documentation and information we can as the features roll out. And where can members find you? Um, so members can find me usually um, perusing through the uh, community, reading all the amazing uh, ideas being posted by our users and just trying to bring those to the Genesis to the Genesis Cloud uh, forecasting product. Um, I sit here all day and I try to figure out what a forecaster wants, but the best source is really um, the forecaster themselves and being able to hear what they're asking for because they're the ones who are doing the job day to day. And we're the ones we're trying to empower and make, make their jobs easier and make them better at their jobs. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> no really, problem. yeah had really good time and it's been a really interesting look into forecasting, which is, as we know, a very sought out topic, but it may be a little bit difficult to speak to. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Glad and to be here. I, <laughs> I hope you can uh, come back uh, some point soon with some of these uh, really exciting releases that are coming up for 2022 and speak to them a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. So that's a wrap. Remember, we publish new episodes of Let Me Pick Your Brain every month, so make sure to tune in periodically. You can also catch up on past episodes by checking out our playlist on the Genesis Community YouTube channel. But why miss out on all the fun? Join us over at the Genesis WM community. You can learn more about workforce engagement management, connect with peers, and get answers to your questions from Genesis experts like Danny. We hope you enjoy this video. If so, remember to like and subscribe to the Genesis Community YouTube channel for more helpful content. Till next time, we'll see you in the Genesis WM community.